First rule with lung sounds is we need to expose our patient when we do a physical exam the best we can. So here we go, three, two, one. So now we've exposed our patients. I wanna show you first where we actually listen to lung sounds. Now, these are my favorite positions for lung sounds. Let's first talk about the back versus the front. So if you listen to lung sounds in the back, it's usually better to hear sounds. Now, listening to lung sounds in medicine means auscultate. Auscultate is listening for lung, lung sounds. So for example, you'll hear auscultate lung sounds in class, okay? So the back is better because let's say someone works out a lot, they have a lot of muscle in their chest, or if your patient suffers from obesity and they have a lot of fat on their chest, it can be harder to listen down to the lungs that are obviously underneath the skin and the muscle and fat and all that, right? So we listen to both, but I'll tell you, the easiest spot is gonna be in the back. Now, the first spot that I like to hit is we see the patient's clavicle up here. I like to go right below that clavicle, right in the middle here, and I'll get lung sounds right underneath that clavicle, right? And go back and forth. Then the next spot I like to go to, really here is kind of mid-chest. So if you go mid-clavicular, you can kind of move down here, not all the way down near the nympha line, but kind of just right in the center here. I'll try to get uh, some lung sounds right in here. Okay. And then I like to, and I can show you on myself as well. So basically, you know like the, the, the seam in your shirt, which is basically midline, they call it the mid-axillary here. On the front, you go a little bit anterior to that under the armpit and the back a little bit posterior to that. So essentially, if here's a patient's armpit right on here, you go a little bit anterior on the, the front part, you go a little bit posterior on the back part. And then basically the way I like to think about it is what you're gonna do is if I'm listening right here, if I go straight across the patient's back, right? Though I can use these points to listen on the back and then the same points from front to back. So that's where we listen. Now here's our first sound. That is wheezing. Now wheezing, we think AAC. The mnemonic AAC is what diseases and emergencies cause a wheeze. Remember, asthma, anaphylaxis, COPD, you see it right here. Now wheezing, as you just heard, is a high-pitched musical sound. The cause of it is bronchoconstriction. You have tight lower airways, right? Meaning your bronchi, your bronchioles are going like this. They're constricting and they're tight. That causes the wheezing sound. I'll play it again right here. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the next long sound. Ronchi is a harsh sound, as you just heard. Now, ronchi stands for junk in the lungs. This patient right here has ronchi. They have a hyper secretion of mucus and or infection junk in the lungs, and they're most likely coughing up green or yellow sputum because they have infection. For example, pneumonia. This is ronchi junk infection, mucus in the lungs, as it gets worse, as it hardens up the lungs, leads to pneumonia, wrong guy. That is rails. Rails is a sound that we can actually mimic. If we take our hair together and we kind of go like this, you can hear the sound, that's rails. It's also, some people say it sounds like you're slurping a straw, right? Either way, it's fluid in the lungs. Either way, it's fluid in the lungs. Now what RAILS is, RAILS is what pulmonary edema sounds like. Remember, pulmonary edema means we have fluid in the lungs. We have fluid where it doesn't belong in your lungs. You're essentially drowning yourself. So this is what occurs in congestive heart failure. So if we hear RAILS, let's say I hear RAILS on just one side, only one side on exam. Well, could it be CHF? It could be. It also could be an early onset pneumonia was on one side, right? Now, if it is bilateral and we see high blood pressure and they're coughing up the pink frothy sputum, then we're gonna think more on the CHF side. Remember, 
We're ca if we're coughing up green yellow, that's more infection. We're coughing up pink and frothy, that's more CHF. It's blood, it's fluid in the lungs. So rails is CHF, rails is pulmonary edema, there's fluid in your lungs. That's rails, come on, let's keep going. A few more abnormal ones, but while I'm here, let's listen to clear lung sounds. Looking good, looking good. You may have heard, what if we have diminished lung sounds on this side and this side's clear? If we have diminished lung sounds, I'll show you right here. Diminished lung sounds on one side or absent lung sounds on one side, but the other side's good. Vice versa, if one side's affected, we think about a tension pneumothorax or a normal pneumothorax. What's the difference? A pneumothorax, the blood pressure is still stable and maintained. Once the heart starts to get pushed and we end up in hypotension, that is tension pneumothorax. Remember the trachea slides over, right? That's a late sign, tension pneumothorax. So look out for unilateral one-sided diminished or absent, that's pneumothorax. Now what if, what do I mean by a severe AAC culprit? Here's what I mean, that's what I call it. What I'm saying is, if we have a patient that has wheezing, tight airways, here's wheezing again. If I hear nothing, that means we have something called an absent chest, meaning the wheezing is so severe that we hear nothing. We have a silent chest. That's the worst. A silent chest on both sides. That is an asthma, anaphylaxis, COPD, an AAC, one of those severely, it's an absent chest. The worst thing we can hear for AAC for a wheezing patient is an absent chest. You've made to the bonus. Here is strider, an upper airway sound you're gonna hear up here. Strider, upper airway. There are five causes of strider you need to know. When you think strider, Pair it up with five. When I say strider, you think five. So here it is. Croup is a pediatric ailment, a pediatric disease, if you will. Croup is pediatric only. That can cause strider. Epiglottitis, yes, it happens in kids more often, but anybody out there can have an inflammation of their epiglottis, epiglottitis. Inhalation burns. That's obviously from, let's say, a victim of a fire, inhalation burn. Uh, anaphylaxis, we talked about that. That's one of our also wheezing culprits, but it can also cause strider as well. Now, strider, just so you're aware, you'll hear it across the room. You won't even need to use your scope to hear strider. As you walk up and walk up the stairs, you'll hear it. The final one, foreign body airway obstruction. If I have a, like a partially obstructed airway, I can get strider. First link in the description is lifetime access to my video vault, which includes 420 videos of my best EMS content, EMT level, advanced EMT, paramedic, and national registry prep for your exam at every single level. It also includes our community group where you can ask me questions personally, and I got your back. First link in the description, lifetime access for that, and I will catch you in the next video. Let's go.